our planet's forests. They are complex ecosystems in which plants and animals coexist with one another. Various trees, both deciduous and coniferous types, are the dominant species in these forest ecosystems and are incredibly important to maintaining a healthy planet. Functioning as the Earth's great air filters, trees rid the air of excess carbon dioxide and other pollutants to improve air quality. Their shade cools the air in the summer, and they also filter water, trap particles to make soil, and help regulate climate patterns around the world. It is important to understand that in both rural and urban areas, trees provide invaluable services that have a direct impact on all of our lives. You know, I think, I think we need places where we can see what happens in the natural course of things. I think they can give us some valuable lessons on managing the places that we do want to manage for more immediate and, and uh, for human need. Almost all of the original forests in the United States have been logged or otherwise disturbed in some way. In the western part of the country, just 5% of the forests remain. In the eastern United States, less than 1% of these ecosystems are left. We are fortunate to have one of these forests locally in Wicomico County. This is Pirate's Wharf, preserving a local treasure. Every forest is important, of course, because they're all producing oxygen, a huge source of oxygen on the planet. They're all absorbing carbon dioxide. About half of the released carbon dioxide is absorbed by the forests of the planet. The forests are slowing down erosion. They are um, producing soil, which is our true wealth. They are places of biodiversity. So for all those reasons, this forest is important. The entire Pirate's Wharf tract of land is divided by Whitehaven Road into two parts. On one side, a smaller cedar forest area with a historic homestead, and on the other side, an over 200-acre forest. In this almost 100-year-old woodland area, an incredible plethora of wildlife has grown and thrived. Species of trees such as oaks, hickories, red maples, sweet gum, loblolly pine, as well as beech trees make up the entirety of the forest. Many birds and animal species live in the forest as well, such as deer, foxes, raccoons, and herons. Humans also have a special connection to this place, dating back hundreds of years to when the local rivers were used for trade and shipbuilding. There is also a historical family cemetery on the wharf, as well as a residence dating back to the first half of the 20th century. In 2002, attempting to forestall a previous logging plan, Dr. Joan Maloof dedicated the forest to the victims of the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks. She and a team of volunteers made tags with the names and ages of the approximately 3,000 victims and tied them to 3,000 trees in the forest. The United States Forest Service has the forest listed in their Living Memorials Project, which includes 9-11 forests throughout the nation. But how could I help to save this forest and honor this forest? And one way we did that was by dedicating it to the victims of the September 11th tragedy, because that was the time when we were trying to save this forest. Nowadays, people enjoy this area for recreational purposes, such as hiking, biking, boating, fishing, hunting, and even field trips. Recently, however, it has been up for some debate on what to do with the land at Pirate's Wharf. While as of April 30th, 2016, there is no set plan for what will be done with the property. In 2014, Wicomico County commissioned a forestry report from the Maryland Department of Natural Resources called a Forest Stewardship Plan, which states that the purpose of hiring a consulting forester was to, and these are direct quotations, assist in managing the harvesting of timber located on these properties, setting a benchmark for the value of the entire tract, and finally, create a timetable for the harvesting of the entire 229-acre tract. It was purchased by the county about 20 years ago uh, using state money, but the county never really had a plan for what to do with it. Um, they thought it was a good, uh, you know, good deal for the county to get some, some nice uh, recreation land and things like that. Uh, county Executive Bob Culber, uh, he lives down in Whitehaven, uh, he lives down in Whitehaven, so he, you know, he's very familiar with, um, with the forest and, and with the land there. 
And so he's been trying to come up with plans on, on what to do with it. I actually have read the stewardship plan that the state forester produced. And if in fact what you want to do is make short-term profit and get forest products, timber, out of that land, he's written a pretty decent plan. If in fact you you see this forest as something that we ought to protect and study and appreciate as an ecosystem, then it's not your plan. Your, your best plan then is as close as you can get to no plan. Right now, the plan for what to do with the forest is very much up for debate. The forest stewardship plan involves the selective harvesting of timber by dividing the property into six sections to reflect a harvesting schedule of five to seven years between each section. The stated reasoning for this is not only for the financial benefits, but to maintain the forest's health as well. You know, sometimes if you do want to just let the forest grow and evolve naturally, then, then not logging is a viable option. You know, you have, you have higher risk for disease, you have higher risk for fire, things like that. If that happens, if you're looking for, you know, a sustainable type of recreation forest, you know, you might selectively thin some of the some of the pine out, especially in things like that. An old growth forest that, as far as we can tell, has never been cut up in Massachusetts uh, near a town called Pisgah. Uh, there's not a tree in that forest that's anywhere near 100 years old. How can that be? Well, Harvard took ownership of that forest, I think as far back as the 1800s. A big windstorm blew the whole damn thing down in the 1930s. It was beautiful, three, 400 year old timber. The president of Harvard was under immense pressure to, to harvest that timber. He said, no, this was nature. This was a windstorm. This is an untouched forest by humans, a natural forest, and it still is, even though there's not a tree left standing. With all of this being said, it is important to minimize disturbances to the forest in order to ensure that the ecosystem at Pirate's Wharf thrives and continues to develop into an old growth forest for the enjoyment of generations to come. There are organizations dedicated to preserving forests such as the one at Pirate's Wharf, and they need your help to spread awareness to increase volunteering, and to support the cause of environmental conservationism. Friends of the Forest is a group of community members banded together to work towards saving mature forests like these. For more information, visit the Friends of the Forest Salisbury Facebook page for updates and events. Pirate's Wharf and other forests like it need the help of the community if we want to ultimately preserve these local treasures.